Well, actually, it is 7.30, so um, it being 7.30, I'm going to open this meeting and uh, I'm going to remind everyone uh, that this meeting is being recorded, um, so that uh, anything you say will be recorded. And um, um, hang on a sec here. Who's with us tonight? Um, just you and it's me. It's on this Just us three. No, Dave's, All right. Dave's coming on. It's on this No, Dave's come. Good evening, everyone. Oh, he's there. Hi, Dave. Hi, everyone. It was Mr. There he is. Yeah. All right. Um, so, um, if everybody's on board here, let's jump right into this 35 Main Street. So, so um, um, John's here. You you are here with us this evening to, uh, and um, I guess we've done a little bit of looking, and I guess Danielle had a discussion with the with your agent there, the real estate agent, and uh, gave us a, a group of. Uh, um, things and some of them are a little, you know, funny. Like an indoor driving range isn't something we would have anticipated in putting there anyway. So it seems a little far field in, in a couple of places. Um, and um, I don't know that it, that when the original design was done, then any calculations were done that would have made it clear that a high water use use could be could be put in there. I think. We had in our minds more of something along the lines of boutique store, bookstore, you know, a, a, a store of some, some some kind of that. You're uh, you're muted, by the way, John, so we can't hear you. Unmute yourself. You want to unmute yourself? There he goes. Hey, I got it this time. Yeah. Happy New Year, um, everyone. So, uh, yeah, so this. Um, you know, and apparently there was not a lot of, uh, well, well, Danielle, do you want to give us a synopsis of what you got out of that? Um, sure. I mean, Brian Roach um, <clears throat> was, was, who's the leasing agent from Atlantic, gave us, gave me an overview of what their efforts had been. And um, he had kind of described some difficulties relating to, you know, the pandemic and, uh, you know, lack of interest from retail um, and the fact that, you know, at one point a tenant had seemed promising a dentist's office, but but they're already, um, you know, pandemic related. This one dentist that was gonna take up a bunch of the space had um, another of their offices uh, closed and had to back out of that. Um, and he had also expressed some, you know, concern about it being unanchored space and that self-storage isn't the best anchor for, um, no. for retail. So that was that was the overview that, um, and I gave you some more of the detail of what Brian had, had had mm -hmm. told me. Okay. Um, so I, I, um, I was hoping that we would get a little more response from uh, um, from the rent from people trying to rent it. Other than you know, some of this is is is. You know, like I like the convenience store kind of thing. That was the kind of thing we all on. But but again, you really kind of do need an anchor of some kind to get people to start driving in there um, and make the other stores viable. I think. You know, so, we don't create a lot of traffic for the storage no. business. No. So it's not like people. You know, you're getting a hundred people there a day pulling in, right. pulling out. You're right. just not getting those numbers. Right. So we did have conversations. Uh, back in June of 2020 with the dentist, they were, we were trying to think outside the box because at that point we were at it for about a year and we, they were actually wanting to us to condominiumize them and sell them. Yeah. So they were interested in two spots. Things were going along well. They actually, I think, reached out to the, to the building department a couple of times and had an architect come up with a plan because dentists these days don't use a lot of water like they used to. Right. All the equipment's very, you know, uh, right. water sensitive. So the usage was fine. And our office, we only have one person in there and one bathroom. So we said, you know, we can always delegate some of our use towards them just to get someone in. And like Brian said, you know, if we had an anchor like a dentist where you have people there all day long, they were going to open up three days a week there. 
until they can build up the, you know, a client list and get more patients in that area. So it wasn't going to be a full-time office right away. It was only going to be a, a few days a week until they built that up. And then the pandemic came and they disappeared. And uh, we also had a, uh, a skin center uh, was interested before the pandemic. They were looking at basically two, two sizes of the spaces put together. And they don't use a lot of water either. So the main, one of the main concerns is water usage. So all the gyms, the restaurants that, you know, all called in were on a septic system. They'd have to put in all the new, all the grease traps and all that other mm -hmm. same yeah. with the hairdresser. Um, so those were the limiting factors for those. Plus a restaurant is parking and the number of seats they could have inside and, and things like that. Mm -hmm. So originally when we were discussing with the board, we were thinking maybe, you know, a realtor, a cell phone company, you know, AT&T or Verizon, someone like that. Right. Um, more of a, uh, a smaller similar chain. To kind of, similar to the kind of thing they got down at Gonzales building down the street there. Right. So, uh, like you said, we had a driving range come. We've had multiple people for uh, fitness centers, which allocates for a lot of parking and also water usage with showers and things like that. And the convenience store was kicking tires for a while, and then that just faded away as well. Um. Well, I mean, obviously, my. Um, I, I can see, and not just you, but how a lot of people were hurt by the COVID thing as far as development goes. And uh, projects that were that were on the table uh, uh, kind of got uh, put back up on the shelf for a while. Um, and I know of a few of those in other towns that that, that happened uh, while they waited for the, you know, for um, things to clear up so people would actually come out and go to these places. So. <laughs> As opposed places to places are having a hard time finding help, so they're not expanding. They can't find yeah. anyone to work. Right, right. So, um, but it also means that I would, you know, that that I look at this and I say, you know, we, you know, first of all, I, I understand and I and I um, commiserate with you on on what you're trying to do and try. You you need to be able to use this space. You put put a lot of money into building this space, and it needs to get you some kind of return. But by the same token, I, I I'm a little have a little bit of trepidation about letting about letting it go all to storage, and then finally, you know, you know, six months, eight months, a year from now, um, things clear up and we begin to get um, a little more interest in this kind of use, and we don't have it anymore. Uh, the only other caveat to that, though, is is there's the one of the if there's one thing that the COVID thing has done to us, it's, it's pushed us into um, online shopping. So, I mean, the stores that we were envisioning going in there were, were brick and mortar type stores. Uh, they're not as popular as they were before this whole thing came down. I mean, glad it wasn't scheduled to be office space. <laughs> yeah, in my, in my uh, own household, there's gone little brick and store stuff done, <coughs> excuse me, over the holidays. So, um, you know, I think we bought an Amazon truck. Um, anyway, um, it's just it's just so um, trying to balance, you know, a decision on on, on losing the the uh, opportunity to have these spaces, and at the same time realizing that you know you you guys have to do something to move everything along. So. Um, I'm going to ask the rest of the board if they have, uh, you know, what their thoughts are on uh, Ryan. I'm going to give you a first shot. What do you, uh, what do you, how do you feel about this thing? Yeah, I'd echo what you said, Warren. I mean, I'm, I'm sympathetic to, you know, the the inability to lease the space. At the same time, I'm not, uh, I'm not, I'm not at the point where I think it's, you know, cut bait on having retail in that in that area. Yeah. I think that was a important. Um, line the board drew and and i mean i think that i thank john and, and the company for conceding that um but at this point i think we, we, you never get it back once you let it go and i don't think we should let it go at this point yeah dave how about you 
Um, I mean, if I can, I'll, I'll steal a point that Vincenzo, our liaison from the uh, from the uh, select board, had said that you know things are changing on that street, and and you know just in in the fall, so October at town meeting, which is only what nine months plus away, there's going to be a vote for sewer. And you're instantly, if the town does vote favorable for that, your property is instantly going to be worth more. Um, that space might be, be more attractive. So you know, with that said, and with COVID um, depressing things for now, I'm just, I'm like everyone else. I'm not that, I'm not there to creating a full storage facility along that stretch of 28. I'd like to see something different there. Which I don't think I think John, you too would. I'm not trying to say you don't. It's just you're 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 asking for some help here. But I, I feel like I just I think there's opportunity. It just might not be in our face right now. Yeah, so we've been dealing with this. So we started marketing this in July of nineteen. Yeah. And it's, we're talking about ten thousand eight hundred square feet of of, of retail space right. in the town. And but you I really can't we, count. You really can't count 2020. You got to take that straight that right off the map. It just it just didn't exist. Uh, the bills were there, though. I know. You, I know. Bill, yeah, exactly. The, the bank was still there every day. I know. Um, believe I believe me. in the information that Danielle gave you. Uh, Brian from Atlantic also mentioned there's a lot of other spaces available for rent on the 128, on Route 120, on Route 28. Excuse me. Yeah. That have chain stores that have a, an anchor, right? So until those get filled up, it'll be feasible to believe that we'll be the last ones to fill up because we don't have. No one wants to be the first one, right? Are so you going to charge enough. the same, John? Would you charge the same rate as your per square foot for storage for retail? It's very comparable, yeah. Which is, is it a public thing? Like what's that cost roughly? And you don't have to say if you. Yeah, I don't have that broken down for okay. this location. I could, I can definitely send it to you, but. But what, what that. are they asking? What's Atlantic asking for per square foot for the retail? It was off of 22. And then we went down as low as 19 a square foot. And that's triple net. And. According to Brian, that was comparable to what's already existing in the marketplace. So it wasn't that it wasn't a pricing thing. Um, yeah. We had, uh, I think the UPS store came around about a uh, beginning of last summer and wanted to pay under 17 and they wanted us to do $30,000 in build out. So, I mean, it would be great to get someone in, but I don't need to be losing money to get a tenant. Right. Because triple net too. I mean, the, to, well, triple net's not bad in this town right now because there's no classification of the taxes. So it's pretty, that's still pretty attractive. So, Even if, you know, if it goes to town meeting uh, and sewer does get approved, how many years is it going to take to get it down the road? Yeah. So they might be approved in nine months, but it might take three years to get it actually in the ground. That's if true you, with the actual infrastructure itself, but I'm referring to your value. If you wanted to, you could turn around and sell that property for a lot more than it's worth right now. So in, in nine months. Chris, what do you, uh, what's your take on this? I agree with everything that everyone said. You know, um, the timing was terrible for what's happened in the, uh, in the world today. Um, and you know, it's, it's quite interesting. You know, I, I made some complaints. I said there was no signage out on main street and Oh, the next day there was a sign there, but you know, it's been up there for, I don't know, five weeks and any, you know, I, I'm not quite sure what's, what's going on, uh, in the, in that industry right now, uh, or any, uh, leasing industry. Um, so, you know, I, I, I would. I, I do agree that once sewer is is uh, hopefully um, voted in, and we're going to put it in, uh, that property is definitely going to be worth some money. Um, 
all the property on Main Street is going to go up in money, and the first to turn it around is going to be going to be the 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 uh, the quickest um, is going to make the best money on it. Um, so you know, being open, it it'd be a, a just a lovely thing. Um, I I like I still want to see it retail. I mean, I don't think I know at at the time you they were coming to us to look for um uh backing on their zoning appeals bid um i don't think i know i wasn't going to back it without without some uh office or some mixed use in there um and i don't know who else on the board would have backed that um so i don't know if they would have got their variance without it um so you know, we, we, we put this in and two years later, they're asking to take it out. So it's kind of like we didn't do uh, any good for the town by doing that, you know, and that, that's, I mean, we were trying to, we're trying to do the right thing for the town. So that's, that's kind of my take on that, which is, I'd like to see it as it is. Yeah. Well, let me ask you a couple of questions. Try to get somebody in there. Let me ask you, John, a couple of questions. You know, what, what's the total square footage of that building? You know, <sighs> ballpark. One hundred two, one hundred and two thousand square feet, I believe. Okay. And um, um, you, uh, how is your how? I, I think your storage rental is pretty high, isn't it? Aren't you up pretty high percentage rental right now? Yeah. I, I think you told us Third before. Floor right? last. <laughs> I think you told us it was pretty March high. March or high April, high. I think it was. Yeah. Well, you're fading away there. Oh, and, yeah, so we opened that last spring and yeah. added that finished up, closed it off with uh, another 30,000 square feet of rentable. Yeah. Of and square so, footage, not rentable space, excuse me. Yeah, yeah. So you're, so you really don't have, the only open space you actually have left at this point is those retail spaces. Correct. Well, on the one hand, you know, it's uh, uh, it means at least you're able to, it's carrying itself to some extent without, without too much trouble, but I, I'm sure you would rather have that space, but I can, but I, I think you see, we, we, you know, we're just a little hesitant to let, to let it go and let it float away and then be reaching for it in a, in a year or two or so or, or less even. Um, that doesn't mean that if the market changes and we get sewer and water, it's easy to take storage out. It's all just nuts and bolts. Yeah, but I think well, it's difficult for us to ask you to do it at that point. I agree, but I'm saying, <laughs> and getting, and getting if, we had, if we weren't renting in a storage, you know, we're we're in we're in the business to try to make a profit. So if we yeah. had excess so space, so I'm trying to think of how we might what we might do here to try to meet both ends here. So. So um, uh, as you said, it's pretty easy to convert back and forth, especially from storage to anything else, because to convert it from what it is now to storage is like nothing. So, uh, and then to take that back out isn't that much. So what does everybody think about, a, um, about, let, about temp letting that go back to storage on a temporary basis? And then return, and then revisiting it in in a in a time frame. And I, I don't know what the time frame that might be, with the other, with a written understanding that if it looks like that the that the retail would is uh would be uh, worth pursuing at that point, that you would uh, uh, be agree to turn it back over again. I, I see an issue with that, Warren. Yep. Go ahead. He's going to have I'm contracts. To find for both no, I, 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 I understand. I understand, but he's going to have contracts with renters. Yeah, and I know, but if it's you, just you storage, can't just yeah, but you just can't. You still got to sign contract with them. Yeah, and you know it's signed for uh, a year, I think. Um, and you month, month. Month. It's month, month, month to month. So all you do is sign a thirty-day lease, and you can move out anytime you want. But yeah. we've hired moving companies to move people for one neat reason or another from one part of a building to another and yeah. done that in the past. It's, just, you know, it's a, it's not a cheap endeavor to finish off this space, even though it's 10,000 square feet. By the time you buy the hallway systems, the doors, the cameras, the yeah. door alarms and all that stuff, it's, it's not inexpensive to, yeah, to yeah. put up just to take back down. 
Well, uh, so so uh, I know what you're trying you to help, but I don't think that's. You don't think that's going to work? Well, what do we think about that? What kind of a time frame would you uh, would you all want to see to uh, to uh, to uh, give this a chance to gel? Because I, I mean, again, everybody, you know, I mean, I don't think there's any doubt that that 2020 and and even a, you know a, a, the first part of 2021, and there, there was nothing happening there. And I don't care what you were trying to do. Unless well, unfortunately, it looks like we're actually going backwards again. Yeah, I don't think this backwards is going to be quite as far. It might go faster, but it won't be as far. And, and I don't believe anyway. The next version shows up. So yeah, I, yeah. I, I know, I know. How many different versions of the common of the flu are there now? You know, there's like yeah, 40 yeah. different versions. Yeah, I know. God is they take a guess as to which strand they think is going to be most prevalent that year. And yeah, this year they guessed too. wrong. They said they said they picked the wrong strand this year, and the flu shots aren't going to help you for anything. Yeah, well, they, what they do is they pick two usually and give you a flu shot that'll take care of two the two most prominent strains right. of the year, mm -hmm. supposedly. <clears throat> so, what are you? What's everybody's pleasure? What do you think? I'm a little ambivalent about the whole thing. Um, um, Can I just mention one thing? And yeah, I won't weigh in on whether or not you should do this or not, but I did want to point out. I, I we kind of had had this on the agenda as a discussion. Um, and I think if we do come to a consensus about what should be done, if there is to be a change made, um, I think we would then be asking Mr. Hall to uh, actually apply to the CPC, whether that's as a minor modification or to, you know, to amend of the course. site plan or a new public hearing. But I did want to mention, too, I had a conversation with the building inspector about it, and he said because self-storage is now a non-conforming use on Main Street, he believes they would also have to go to the CBA. That's not, you know, a, a showstopper yeah. necessarily, but I wanted to just right. put it out there that that is among the things that would need to be done. Danielle and I actually had a conversation today about, you know, a lot of our locations, we actually have resident managers, meaning they, you know, we have an apartment or a house on the property that the managers right. actually live at. And a lot of them, it's, it works well for us because after hours, you know, if the manager's there, they can take care of a situation if it should arise or if the fire alarm goes off right. and the fire department shows up. You know, there's a chance that they might be home. So the fire department likes it, the police department, the customers like it. And I did ask if that was an auxiliary use. So we did, you know, we're trying to think outside the box to use the, to try to right. use the space without impacting the town. And I right. guess it's not zoned for it. So that's right. That's true. Right. So we're trying to be creative to at least make use of the space. Well, we're trying to uh, hold true to the, to the concept that we started out with, which, uh, which, um, due to no fault of anybody's, uh, has uh, morphed a little bit all on its own. Um, and if we were starting out fresh today, it may get looked at a little differently, but we are where we are. And um, so, again, I'm looking to see um, what's everybody's pleasure. What do you do? You do you see a time frame and a, 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 some kind of a definitive time frame that we should wait, or that we would make sense to wait, or? Or do we begin the process of uh, of? Um, Can I ask when the town meeting is? Is uh, it in April for the sewer? June. It's it's going to be in June, right? All right. Okay. I think the sewer funding question will be October. Part there is going to be a piece of it okay. in June, but the actual big funding question will be October. Yeah, but you'll get an idea in June as to what the what the what the um, how the town's looking at it. I think. And uh, if we I, if it was in April, I know our town's meetings are in April, so that's why they were. I was saying yeah. we could wait till April, see what that does. You know, I don't know. I'm trying to I'm trying to work with you guys just as well, but I'm you know, just trying to trying to make the building usable. Right, right, right. So, so any suggestions for anybody here? I, I don't I don't know. I mean, I'm. I'm a, but the only, I mean, the only thing I can think of is that we would, is that we would um, try a, a time certain again. Uh, you know, I mean, I was hoping that we would get a little more input from the, uh, or, or a little more, um, a little better idea of what, what the possibilities of renting or some, maybe some new ideas for moving those units for you. But, uh, um but it was still in the throes of this whole COVID thing. So uh, that's kind of holding everything back a bit. Um, 
So I, I don't know. What does everybody think about, uh, uh, you know, waiting a time certain? I mean, until, until the October meeting and seeing if that, um, if we do get the sewer and, and which might be something that will start this situation as opposed to, you know, saying it doesn't look like we're going to get there. Um, I mean, he's not up to date on it, to be honest with you. So, yeah. Well, um, um, it, it's a couple of things that uh, that um, I'm thinking. I'm not just the sewer, the sewer project is what will create some excitement on the street, but the um, but the real thing is is whether or not um, whether or not brick and mortar as a as a place to go comes back to some extent after this whole thing. As this calms down, when we get into, you know, a realistic situation. I mean, you know, I mean, um, a lot of people have uh, basically eliminated, even myself, my vacation. Forget it, not going. Um, because of the uh, because of this. So I mean, there's a lot of that. There's, there's a lot of that. So there's a lot of things that are not happening as a result of this, and especially as a result of the newest variant. So. Um, are we looking at something in a, you know, where we never had a chance, <laughs> you know, where we, where if we wait till this thing calms down a little, we might, there might be a chance. Uh, I don't, I don't know the answer to that. The market is really unsure. The market for this is unsure, as you well know, at this point. Um, and I'm just not sure how that's going to pan out. I would like to see it go a little, I, I would like to see it wait a little while, uh, but I'm not sure of time frame. Unfortunately, that's the thing, and I wouldn't want to well, make it too long. Picking off of your point, you know, I know several people who work for big companies, Fidelity and all those, and they're stocked yeah. that they may never go back to the office. Yeah. You know, so if you don't have people traveling up on the road going to work, uh, how are these brick and mortar places going to survive? Well, that's you know, exactly right. People aren't stopping off to get coffee on the way to work. They're getting in, in the kitchen at their house. Yeah. They're not going well, out. Well, I... I don't. I don't know about that. I think there's, there's a lot of people going out for their coffee. I saw some lines at the at the coffee places over the weekend, which are unbelievable. Yeah. Right. Well, unbelievable. unfortunately, we can't have a coffee. We don't. We don't. We can't have a drive-through. So I don't. Think yeah. No. Have. No. I'm not. I'm not suggesting that for you. But it's just you know people are out, and I know their people are just they they want they want to get out. They want to go places, and there's there are people that don't just shop online. They they you know a lot of people do. Um, but at some point the, the, the inexpensive shop online thing is going to change, I think, and it's going to become more expensive to shop online than going to a store for some things, not for everything, but for some things, because places can't keep up with this. We'll buy seven different sizes and pick the one that fits and sit, send everything back for free. That's going to stop at some point yeah. The you know, the return shipping for free is going to stop, which is, which, which changes the, I think that's going to change the way those places do business and get I a lot of, free I think the free delivery thing is going to fade a little too. It's, yeah. Um, you know, because of the cost of delivering. I mean, if they try to go to all electric vehicles in order to meet the climate change thing, that, that's going to get more expensive. You're going to have to start paying for that. So, yeah. But I yep. mean, that's, that's actually, but that, that's neither here nor there in this point. I'm, I, I'm trying to figure out what we do with this today, you know, and I'm just not. Um, you know, I, I, I think that moving it out and, and waiting to, to the town meeting in October doesn't, is, is a, is a a bridge for us for at least for me um i do know that um you know we had always thought about at some point changing the zoning on the entire main street to make it to make it uh um a, a bit of everything you know for for all uses including residential so you know, maybe we can look at, we can't do just 35 Main Street because that's spot zoning, but, you know, we right. might be able to think of everything so that, yes, you can turn one of those those empty units into an apartment or a condo or something, however you want. I don't know. It would be an apartment, basically, uh, for your, for your on-site manager, which to me sounds like a great idea. It's, it's, it's really a good idea. A, yeah. One of the apartments across the street was up for sale. We tried and it was gone before I could even call the broker. 
Yeah, so, there you, you go. So, yeah, and, and that, that's where we said, absolutely. "Hey, wait a minute, we got ten thousand square feet here, maybe." So that's when we I reached out. Yeah, no, and and I I don't have to, you know, if we could, it, we can't just do you. Like I said, you got We got to do everything, so we have to be able to put it all together um, to do it. Um, you know, at one point we had thought about doing that, and, and we backed off on it a little bit. Um, so, you know, and it, it's that that's that sounds for you guys kind of a win win actually, even for the town because you've got somebody there that's going to be there probably seventy percent of the time if something happens, and it makes the first responders. Um, able to respond better and quicker. Um, yeah, we probably so, can't do a use variance there, so I mean, you know. Yeah, not for that. Not for you that. have to rezone the the you have to rezone the whole area or yeah. part of the area. So. Well, I don't no, know it was just, it was just an example which... how we were just you know just trying to be creative. Yeah. No, no, and I, I understand, and 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 that's 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 all right. That's that's. I thought that would have been a win win for all parties. So <laughs> right. Cool. Well, I can say uh, I would say. Um, um, that I guess uh, I, I guess everybody seems to think that it would be good if we could just uh, walk this out just a little further, but I don't want it to be un open ended. Uh, I think we need to give it a uh, some kind of a date. October is a long way away. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I think we need to give it a date and revisit it, and to see if we're making any headway in the marketplace because. Uh, this last one that we did was strictly to find out, to take a look at what the, how the marketing was going and not, not uh, anything else, just to see if we thought the marketing for it was. Well, I think it was just to have a discussion and, you know, the, Brian said, you know, hey, basically our customer is kind of like an office space. Someone who does something to the, you know, open to the public where you come in and, and you get, a, you know, half a dozen, dozen customers a day that come in to pick up stuff or things like that and right now he's just saying that there's the supply of retail is is uh, abundant and maybe if that gets constraints then you know our project will look more attractive to people and be the first you know get someone to get in because once you get the first one it's easier to get the second one and so right, far right. and so far once there are already people in there well, um, I still, uh, but I, so, so well, I guess um, what I'm hearing from everybody is they'd really like to drag it out just a little bit. Is that was, is that a fair assessment, Ryan? You, you, that would, you'd like to. Yeah, I, I think that's accurate. I mean, I, I get, I struggle with the, the way it's been positioned all along. And I, I, I don't recall exactly what point we conceded this retail use, but it seems like these, you know, retail office spaces and I'm, I'm in the business. I understand you can't build in maximum flexibility, but it sounds like just no flexibility was built in for users here. So inevitably you ended up with a, a higher TI cost. And I feel like, you know, the UPS store example in particular reeks to me of like the perfect opportunity to get a, a high volume retail tenant oh, in yeah. that space that could have been a great anchor for that building. Uh, and I, again, I don't understand your exact economics in the terms of the lease. And you say they were, unsatisfactory but to me you you make you make an investment in that anchor tenant and it gets the ball rolling and i see that none of them have worked out but as warren said and probably the worst retail climate in history they haven't worked out so um you know i'm optimistic that hopefully covid starts to loosen its grip on life and you know there's still a huge push for you know buy local and i think that i think that local small retail is going to rebound and people are going to be more drawn to that um, in the future. So uh, I, I kind of want to hold on to this as long and as strong as we can, to be honest. And I, I apologize, John, I know that's not what you want to hear, but uh, that's, that's my thought. Just from your own, just from your own uh, thoughts, Ryan, w w would you say six months in a revisit? Or do you think? Yeah, I mean, I don't know what's, I mean, six months, I mean, if we're, <laughs> rocking COVID all winter, in reality, what, what kind of momentum are you going to build economically from, you know, April 15th on, right? I mean, if, if, I'm, a, if I'm Inertia Dental or the UPS store or anyone else looking to expand my business or open a new location, I'm not going to have that kind of confidence two months out of the winter to the point where John's going to have tenants rolling in. So I'm fine with revisiting in six months. I just don't think that John's going to, I, I 
predict John would come back in six months and be, still be in the same exact position. I don't, I don't really see that there's enough time to, for things to kind of turn around as we come out of the winter time, but I'm not against revisiting at that point. Yeah. Well, I just had to say there's but too long of a, of a time frame on it. Um, Dave, what do you, uh, what do you think? Um, I'm in agreement with Ryan. Okay. And sorry, John. That's how I feel though. Yeah. <clears throat> they just hate to give up this retail space and I don't, I don't blame them because it's It's so hard to come by and so easy to lose. Uh, Chris, what about you? Uh, I'm in agreement with the other two members. Oh, Absolutely. Six, yeah. Six well, I, you know, you got to give somewhere and, and I, you can't, you know, I've been, I've been pushing for this for a long time and I understand, like you said, it's, they're hard to retail space like this is hard to come by. And once it's gone, does not yeah. come back? I don't, I don't, you know, it's, it's hard to, it's hard to, to get that push in there. Well, um, uh, I, I would like to, to at least be after that June town meeting. So yeah. not, you know, in the, in the middle of June or whenever, I guess June town meetings beginning of June, Danielle, yeah. do you know? Yeah. Yeah. So, I don't know the date, but. So the, the yeah. second meeting in June, we could revisit this. I think we we can revisit it. Yeah, I don't know how you know well, what you know, my I'm feelings just, are. I'm just trying to I'm, I'm trying to come up with some kind of a, a you know I don't want to go too long. Uh, I don't I, I don't want to uh, um, I, I want to give a time certain that's not so you know I don't want to go two years or something like that you know but but I'm I'm thinking that that in six months you know we should see if the sun's coming up or if the sun's going down by that point. Yeah, <laughs> I would think so. You know, that's what I'm trying to. That's where I'm trying to get to. I'm trying Groundhog to Groundhog Day. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm trying to get to the point where I can, where where I where everybody finally either finally admits that it ain't going anywhere, or we see that it is, and 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 you have some confidence that you'll be able to do something with it. You see what I mean? I I'm, I don't know where else to go with this. I think that's probably the the. Uh, Again, because we really shouldn't be giving this up. I mean, it's it's in there, it's it's a, it's what was approved. And again, there is some hoops you'd have to go through even to change it. Uh, and we just feel I, I I I agree with everybody here. We'd hate to just give it up after it's so hard to come by. So I think that's is that if that if that's a consensus, then uh, with everybody is which it, which it sounds like it is. Um, I think that might be the decision we're going to put forth. Um, uh, um, I wish there was a we could give you more to work with in that, John. But I, you know, but I think we really need to give this a chance, a chance to go someplace. So, so I think that's what uh, that's I think that's where we're going to stand. Uh, I can't hear you. You're going to have to lean forward a little. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll reach out to Danielle in end of June, or yep. you know, get on the on the agenda end of June or in the July one. So, so well, let's hope you thing, don't have to. Like, yeah. Well, I was going to say, you know, what what can we do? I mean, you know, we we do have the EDC. We do have you know our finger on the pulse of this situation. You know, what can we do to help them? You know, to to to. Uh, to push this out there a little and maybe give you a hand with it. I don't know. If you think of something, please feel free to say something, you know. I mean, we'd be willing to I help. Appreciate that. So uh, I, I think that would be and and we'll we'll uh, we'll mull it over a little ourselves to see if we can uh, if as we get well, there's four board members, so there's four units right there, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hobby shop, no, sports. Not, hobby shop, a sports funny. shop. Uh, what not, else? Not you got? funny. One of my one of my businesses might, in fact, be looking for an, an office space like that. So, so uh, you could I, be the I, first I, one. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm 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 saying that there is some possibilities here, and I, I just said I know a couple of other people that that are waiting to get started on something, but waiting for this to calm down a little. So that that's also in the back of my mind that I that there are people out there, but they're just not ready yet. We we already oh, rent one one unit from you, John, on the second floor. I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. So uh, so uh, I think that's where we're going to stand for right now. We appreciate your understanding, and we'll just you know we'll we'll try to help as well. That would be great. I appreciate it. Okay. Thank you very All much. All right. Thank, thank you, you, John. Everyone. Yeah. Have All a right. good night. Good Thanks, night. John. Okay. Um, are we? Uh, 
uh, we are in fact past our eight o'clock time frame. So um, we have a continued public hearing for nine Market Street, and we're gonna. I guess we're gonna vote on a continuance for that. Is that correct? Yes, yes. But there is a correction. The date um, of our second February meeting is actually February fifteenth, and not the sixteenth, as I accidentally told Attorney Keys. So they have requested to continue to the second meeting in February, but the date will be the fifteenth and not the sixteenth. The fifteenth. Well, um, I usually am away on uh, vacation that time, but I'm not going. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to be on a cruise ship this time of the, uh, right now, Warren. No, the, that's... the CDC said specifically, don't go. <laughs> so my wife's like, we're not going anywhere. What are you, crazy? <laughs> <laughs> so I'll be here for that. <laughs> Me too. So that's, <laughs> that's where we're at, no vacation. Uh, Maybe later in the year, we'll, uh, I'll escape for a little while, but I'll let you know as that evolves. Uh, two years without a vacation. It's not good. Not good. <laughs> you went to the Midwest last year, I thought, Warren, didn't you? Yeah, but I go out to the Indianapolis because they have a, I take classes out there at the oh, okay. Convention Center for one, for my, because I get my, uh, my continuing education hours for some of my licenses. Oh, okay. So, yeah, I go to school. <laughs> My wife gets to play with the kids. I don't. I have to go to work. I have to. Uh, um, but yeah, so so yeah, so the fifteenth. So uh, it is. Uh, Ryan, do you have that uh, request for continuance as a motion, or Danielle, are you going to make it? It's, it's actually not in there. I'll just say um, I move that the CPC vote to uh, continue the public hearing for ninety two Concord Street to February fifteenth, twenty twenty two, at 8 p.m. Let's make it 8 p.m. So move. So move. Thank you, Ryan. Second. And a seconded by Mr. Hayden. And any further discussion? Hearing none, uh, Mr. Carroll. Aye. And Mr. Redlaw. Aye. And Mr. Hayden. Aye. And myself, aye as well. So four in favor, no opposed. Uh, Jeremiah is not with us this evening. So um, that is in, that is continued. Okay, so you have uh, accessory dwelling unit bylaw on here. I read through it a couple of times. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's, you know, what did you want to do with that? It, nothing. Um, <laughs> we actually said at our last meeting that we would um, put this on again for the second meeting in January um, mm -hmm. because there wasn't really much time to make any real changes to it. So yeah. it's on there um, mostly by accident and we'll okay. put it on for the next meeting. <laughs> Yeah, because I, I read through it again. I, say they, I had to read the old one again. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of, yeah, because that's what I did. I read through it again, and it's kind of the same. And I'm like, yeah, it's kind of okay, but, you know. It was exactly the same. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's being honest. <laughs> okay. So uh, other than that, what we have some minutes for December 21st, if we, uh, if, if we have a motion. I didn't see any. We don't have minutes ready yet. No, no minutes ready. Okay. All right, well, I didn't look for them. I just saw them on the uh, agenda here. All right, so the only thing we have left would be planning administrator update if we have anything of any consequence there. Just a few things. Um, the uh, sewer project, uh, the planning portion of that project, um, which the DPW director is um, heading up, uh, we received uh, proposals and um, completed the evaluation and um, hope to have someone under contract soon but that it's still in process um but i will let you know um as soon as that kicks off and gets underway um i know that the hired consultant will want to meet with the cpc um and i know that they'll also be wanting to meet with the economic development committee too because part of this is outreach to business owners to get a good sense of um where business owners stand as far as you know their their plans their interests um and to try to figure out who the best people would be to talk to um to get a good picture for how um, this could impact the commercial uh, landscape in North Reading. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so I will keep you posted on that, um, but the, the contract is not yet signed, uh, but I'll let you know when it is. Okay. Um, and then uh, let's see. I received an updated uh, presentation deck from Abacus regarding the Main and Winter Street project. Um, we had said when we met last uh, that I would be sending it out to the property owners 
with another cover letter, just letting them know that this is something that we, you know, they're kind of the results, uh, you know, our, our, our findings from this project and kind of as a last chance to um, invite them to, to reach out with um, interest, comments, questions. Um, uh, so I'm, I'm working with, um, with David Eisen on kind of a cover <clears throat> introduction to that presentation. And I think we should also, if we can, um, plan to try to, when the select board can have us, come and make the presentation of, of how that study went, what the findings were. Um, I think as David pointed out to us, um, the property owners themselves will want to know where the town might stand on a project like this, where while the select board will also wanna know where the property owners stand on it. So we can't wait for one to hear it first and, and have buy-in, and I think we need to right. reach out right. to both at the same time. Just, yeah, um, just get started on it. Just get started, right. Yeah. Just, yeah. just see where the interest lies and um, you know, see where it goes, depending yeah. on what we hear from well, I mean, one of the things uh, that the 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 the, uh, the progress of the sewer situation is probably going to lend a little bit of credibility to it. So, we we'll make it look a lot more possible, even though yeah. that wasn't the original intent of the thing. It, it 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 basically brings it into focus a little that it's a very doable thing. Yeah. So. And I, I think too, one of the things. I mean, while we didn't start the project with that intent. Um, we started it with a package treatment plant as the intent, but what we learned of, um, through David's outreach to the developers is that it it was, while a possibility, not something that a lot of developers would be interested in. So I think that it, that's really helpful information for us to have at this point, and we're in a better position, you know, than we were with the sewer lease. Yeah, yeah so, so one of the things about the, the original proposal was the cost of that treatment plant and all of that, that infrastructure Nobody wanted to bear that cost. And that was part of the problem. So having sewer in the street takes that off the table. So that, well, that's something that we there that he was talking about asking the town to bear, a cost they asked the town to bear. And if but if we have sewer in the street, we no longer have to ask the town to bear that cost. And so that makes the project a little more attractive, probably to a developer. So um, so anyway, yeah. maybe maybe a little further out in the horizon than, than we like right now. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't mean that, uh, but it means that the work that we put into it may come to fruition uh, a little later in, in life, you know? So it doesn't, yeah. it also makes me not worry so much about anything that's happening on that property right now, because it's all transient. And it, and, it, and, it, you know, mm -hmm. and it could be, and if that happens and suddenly that becomes something that the town says, wow, we can actually do this now. That that it could uh, it could actually happen. So, just so I don't we don't think that we've wasted a whole bunch of time. I think we have put a good effort in. So, yeah, I That's definitely good. agree. And I think that the people who own those properties had at one point wanted to see what we could come up with. And well, you know, whether or not they're interested now, we have answered the question that we set out to answer. And um, well, I think if they think that if I think if they think if they look at it and start thinking long range, like you know, like do I want to come here and do this every day. Well, wait a minute, this project, I won't have to. This thing would take over and I would just get my 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 goods out of it. And I, and, and yet this we'd have this big project. So mm -hmm. and, and down the, having it a little further down the road may be more attractive to these landowners than ha trying to stuff it down their throat in the next three weeks or something. You know what I mean? Or well, the next yeah. three weeks. So um, uh, it'll give them time to digest it and to, and to be planning, saying, okay, uh, this, this particular part of my business is going to kind of wear out in a period of time. So uh, by that time, I'll be ready to sign on to this project, which they have already in place. So, so there's a possibility there. So, yeah. Yeah. okay. Um, let's see. I, I'd love to, although I can't tell you when, because I don't know what works for the select board schedule, but at some point in the next few months, I, I would love for us to have a joint meeting with the select board in order to talk about certain housing related issues, um, you know, including <laughs> including the Habitat for Humanity proposal, including yeah. Carpenter yeah. Drive, um, and, and also including accessory dwelling units, which um, as we right. continue to work through this, I think it'll be important to know, um, you know, whether or not that's something they might consider supporting. So I think we have a few housing related items that would be great to have, you know, kind of a joint working session with them on. In the future, I can inquire as to when, if they might be interested in that and if, you know, when the availability might be. Yep. So, just I think see how far positive. down the road, just when you want to see how far down the road they want to kick the can. <laughs> well, I thought it could be really positive if we, you yeah, know, yeah. all talk together about so. what okay, we good, hope good, to achieve. Good. 
<laughs> yes, we'll be we'll be positive about it. Yeah, we 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 should really do that. We should try to, um, you know, make our case, give them as much you know as much information, and, and try to see if if they have any interest in moving any of these projects along. Because without their support, we're not going to go anywhere with them. So that's true. I agree. It it wouldn't really you know as we saw a town meeting, it, it just wouldn't pass yeah. without their support. Um, I I yeah. do know that the St. Teresa's property is being looked at carefully um, by our consultants to see whether it could be su suitable for any type of sewer use. Um, and I'll keep on top of that and and tell you what yeah. we find out when they tell us. Um, I think what I, I know would, your opinion, I, but <laughs> yeah, I think I think well, you know, I mean, it's a matter of of elevation, so it doesn't work for elevation reasons unless you're going to dig a hole fifteen or twenty feet deep. So, um, um, however, uh, what I would like to do, if it's at all possible, is to uh, uh, put together. Uh, or just a request from them, a, uh, from the select board, if they could just briefly give us what their primary concerns are about this, about this, uh, the overlay district and, and what they can, you know, because they, they indicated that they had concerns. And I'd like to know what those are so that when we do go sit down with them, we can address those concerns of right up front. Because to wait until that point means we now have to go back and come back. So. So, okay. I mean, let's, let's ask them what their primary concerns are, because a lot of the rules that that for this overlay district are in that bylaw from 2008. They're all there, um, um, as far as density and everything else. So, so, so obviously there are some additional concerns that are not addressed in that. Let's find out what they are and address them. Okay. Sure. That okay. that way, when we go sit down with them, we'll actually be able to address those concerns, and as well as reinforce the ones that are already there. Yeah, so, and if there are changes that we might need to discuss, then we can at least right. um, know where- We can put together can, something, bring it to town meeting and get it fixed. Yeah. Sure, yeah. good deal. Um, all right, uh, let's see. I'm continuing we to work with a, town- We didn't get a oh. chance to say good evening to Vincenzo. He's been sitting Hi, patiently Vincenzo. listening. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm continuing to work with town council on our MBTA uh, community housing requirements, which I know I mentioned at the last meeting. I still don't have any answers yet. Um, I need to uh, try to set up a meeting um, with John Eichmann to talk about that. Um, I don't know yet whether we will be considered compliant or not. Um, if we are not considered compliant, we are going to need to potentially look at a new zoning district to allow more multifamily housing. So I will keep you posted on what I find out. I do know that between now and May, um, one of the requirements is for the select board to hold um, you know, a, a public announcement of some kind at, at one of their meetings. And so I'll be sure to um, find out exactly what the requirements are for that um, so that, you know, I'm sure we will have an, an involvement and a role of some sort in when that does happen. That doesn't mean that anything has to change this year as far as our zoning. It just, it just means that there is a disclosure that has to be made um, publicly where we recognize that this uh, legislation has been passed and that the regulations are, right, you right. know, here and we may be making some changes and these are the issues we have right. to consider. So, yeah. yeah, we've been, we've be been talking about that. We've been talking about that for a little while since they passed that, so we haven't really. Yes, uh, now for a while, we thought we were totally exempt because we are not within a half mile radius of any MBTA station, but we have found out very recently, like in the last month, that um, we actually do need to comply whether or not uh, we have uh, access um, to an MBTA station. So um, more yeah. to come on that. <laughs> um, yeah. I will be getting started pretty soon with New England Civil on our subdivision and um, site plan review regulation updates. This is something that we had asked for in our budget. Um, we have about half right. the cost to cover it now. Anyway, I'll be getting uh, that under contract very soon. Um, Shaylene, haven't heard anything from them yet. That report that we received on 9 Shay that uh, Dave Giangrande was not satisfied with, um, I have communicated that. Um, and I'm wondering if you would like me to request that their engineer come in to meet with the CPC or just kind of continue to work with Dave on what the best approach would be. But at this point, I have not heard any feedback from Dave's report after sending it to the, um, the builder. Okay, well, so, well, yeah. Well, these the issues that Dave Jane Grandy brought brings up are, are going to end up um, 
being duplicated with if if they don't get addressed they're going to end up being duplicated when the as built is done mm -hmm. in other words we're going to end up with the same complaints or the same issues or the same uh, unsatisfactory results when the as built is done for that which means it'll have to be dealt with then i think it mm -hmm. makes sense to deal with it before the subdivision is finished before you know okay. rather than wait until we got to tear something up yeah so um probably uh um you know we should we should probably have and now luke is going to be the one he is the engineer of record but he's not the one who did that report on nine shay that's right well, well the, 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 the thing the, he 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 seems to be a hesitant participant and and um and and, and he's a good engineer so his hesitation makes me nervous <laughs> Or makes me wonder, you know, uh, because he's a good engineer. He knows that he's he's brought plenty of projects to us, as we all know, and they've been pr properly done. He's been good. So um, I, he, uh, you know, I mean, I would love to see him shoulder this and really and and then fix everything because I think he can. Uh, but whether he is being allowed to or whether he um, has a level of comfort in it, I don't know. We could request that he come in, and I probably would okay. like to do it, even if it's informally. Okay. With us. Okay. So we don't put, I don't want to put pressure on him immediately. I'd like to have him come in informally and talk to us about what he thinks needs to happen. Okay. If he can do that. Okay. Um, as an alternative, if he can't do that, um, I'm kind of wondering if we could have another sort of a working meeting, kind of like what we did previously. Yeah, you, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I'll, I'll explore both of those, I think, yeah. also with, with Dave and see what Dave... Yeah, does. because if we have to, we'll have Dave Murray and Dave Jean Randy come in and I'll come in and we'll just sit down and go through the whole thing again. Okay. All right. All right. Let me um, follow up with everyone and, right. um, and figure out a way forward. Um, I would rather not have us to have to do it. I mean, you know, they should be bringing this to us fixed. We shouldn't be going to say and, you know, pointing out to them things that we think need to be fixed. I mean, we should get a report from my peer review engineer, we should give it to them, they should address it, and that's it. I mean, so right. let's see if we can get it to happen by the book. And if not, then we'll have to do whatever we got to do. So it is confusing having two engineers involved because we have an engineer of record and we also have another engineer who was hired by the builder to do this one site. And I've so far not had any communication with that person. So I'll I'll just have to reach out to everyone and see what we can well, do. Well, and the, the problem is that that, 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 the, that the as built that would be done by the quote, engineer of record does not include the grading in that particular area. So, so I mean, you know, we're not going to get a second look at that. That's the problem. Right. Warren. So, yeah. Uh, this is a question for Danielle. When you say builder, are you talking about Murray or are you talking about the builder yeah. of the lot? The builder no. of the lot. He the was the one the who, yeah. He's a had another him. engineer, and okay, so that's that's I'm um, sure that's where Luke is have, having his problem, Warren. Yeah, I know because he's he's got to utilize that information, and it may be incorrect. And uh, you know, but Murray doesn't have control of that lot anymore because he sold it off, right? Yeah, I'm sure he's closed on it by now. Yeah, so that's you know, so that's also the issue. That's the issue for Luke. You know, he doesn't have real control over it. And, but this guy is never going to get, you know, his anything for his house. Well, here's, here's the thing, though, Chris. I'm, I'm, I'm not. Um, I can't. I don't. I don't mean to say that I don't care. What 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 I care about <clears throat> is that that the thing has been properly done. What I oh, care you know, about I, is I, that when we get a 25 year storm. That we don't that that that, that half of the subdivision doesn't wash down to the nutter road. That's uh, what I, I agree. About, you know, I mean, uh, you know, so I I um that's what I care about is that it works as designed. Right. You know that that that's right. what I care about. So so how do how I get to that, um, how I get to that to make sure that down the road we're not looking at, you know, some disaster where somebody comes and says, why didn't you do something about it when you had the chance? Right. And we may you, we may have to get the builder involved also yeah. because you know you got you got Murray who's responsible for the whole project, right? You've got Luke as the 
engineer of record. You've got yeah. s- some other engineer that's done uh, something for a lot nine, what, whatever yeah. lot it is. And yeah, what we, then what we don't have is we don't is have the bu- any. We don't we don't have any hold over them. We don't have anything. Right, right. But know. the builder does. Yeah, yeah. The builder does, and and we've well, got to the make. The developer does. The developer is gonna. The developer ultimately is gonna be responsible for this for this project. That's true, but with, if the builder's not there in the meeting and that other engineer is, he's not going to talk to us. Yeah. He, I, I'm, I, I have a feeling that's what's going to happen. Um, you know, we may have to do that more on a meeting like this, not a meeting, you know, in the office. And, and, I, and I totally uh, have confidence in your, your um, capabilities, Danielle's capabilities, Dave Giagrandi's capabilities, but we, we bring in a few more people to the to the yeah, show I was, I was when we're sitting here along, even go out on the site you know to say okay what, yeah well you know, if, we ha- if we have to we have to you know you know we might have to do that yeah. you know if we yeah. got to we got to yeah. all right well, i'm sorry danielle it's just that that's got to be you know it, you know i just want to make sure it's done you know right yeah i know there have been too many problems with that yes too many time too many places it's it's really it's time for us to say listen let's you know let's fix this so i can i can only remember one other place about this and uh having problems and that was over at mcintyre crossing yes when they had all the all the manholes raised yeah yeah in that well that and country club but we got those those two places got fixed yeah no no longer do we have raised manholes when they're building a street out right that we took care of that yeah. And and the country club road, we took care of that also. Yeah. That was that was something that no engineer could have expected unless you knew it was in the ground on that yeah, end. Right, right. So, all right. Um, is that is that it, or you have any? That's that's all for now. Okay. No ZBAs. No ZBAs this time. Okay. I just saw it on your on your agenda. That's all. Yeah, oh, I think we put it on every time, just in case. You do, yeah, it's on you the do. Time, for the rest and I and time. I asked, I just to make sure we don't want to miss yeah. any of those because then we're, you know, we yeah, feel responsible. And Warren everybody, does a good job with that. All right, everybody, thank you very much uh, for coming tonight. And uh, I know that that um, thirty-five Main Street was a little bit of a, a headache. Thank you all for your input. I mean, I think you know, it's it. There's no good decisions for that right now. I think what we've done is the best we can. Hopefully, things will look a little better as we get further down the road. And um, but that's why I specifically asked how many square feet because if they're they're only they're missing a very small percentage of their of their property, and the rest of it is fully rented. So it's not. Well, uh, it, I don't think I don't think they're 100 percent rented on the third floor yet. I don't even think they're 20 percent rented on the third floor. There's still yeah. room on the second floor. Yeah, but I don't um, think they're starving. I think they're doing just fine. No, no, they're doing fine. So, they're doing I mean, fine. I, I, as much as I hate to drag them out of the way, I don't feel too bad about it. I'd like to see it come to, I'd like to see it end up the way we designed it. Yeah, I think yeah. the place that's probably hurting more now is is next to, uh, down on Main Street there, the older storage place. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Extra <clears throat> space, is that who it is? Because. Yeah, yeah. We left there because it was for a bigger space and they were a little bit more economical and there's no dirt in this place. This place is clean. Yeah. The other place is not. Yeah. All right. Well, again, thank you all very much. Thank you for coming, Vincenzo. I know we didn't uh, <laughs> you just got to listen tonight. So, <laughs> uh, but we appreciate the fact that you attend the meetings and stay and keep us up to date. So. I'm not talking. I talked for 12 hours today. Yeah, that's, that's okay. It's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. <laughs> happy New Year to everybody. Yeah, happy, happy New Year. Good night. Good night. Have a good night, all.